Hi everyone, welcome back to Scientifically Beautiful and this is Dr. Christina Rahm and I am very happy today to welcome Stephanie Wooten. Hi Stephanie. Hi, thank you so much for having me. S Stephanie is um, not only a friend of mine, but we also are working on different projects together in healthcare, not just in the United States, but throughout the world. Um, one of my favorite things about Stephanie, other than how beautiful she is and her personality, she's got an amazing personality full of life, <laughs> and she's used that to help people. Um, but one of my favorite things besides that is her dedication to really empowering other people and bringing people together to do a common good and to help um, not just in science, but also in business and in different areas in society. enjoyed this episode of Scientifically Beautiful, which is on the Life is Tough, but you can be tougher network. So start with telling me about yourself and anything okay. you want. It doesn't have to be now. I'd like to know a little bit about you and how you got here. Got it. Well, thank you so much. I so appreciate it. So, um, you know, I always say um, I've been very blessed throughout my career. Um, one of the things that I always tell people is I had just phenomenal mentors from day one that really embraced and, and really helped me. Because I think when you're graduating from college, first of all, you don't really know the pathway that you're going to take. And so um, I started out and uh, was working for um, a company. Many of you may know ADP and uh, the head of that company actually recruited 16 of us to come over to another company called First Data. And um, we were, you know, everybody was executives, kind of except for me. I was a manager. I was one of the youngest sales managers at the time um, for ADP. And I was living in, I grew up in Indiana. And so um, I relocated to Nashville and was, was basically brought in to build the infrastructure there. And so I was very fortunate, had a phenomenal mentor at that point. Um, and then was able to promote. And I built um, a program for SunTrust Bank from ground zero, and it became a, one of the most successful programs for the company and everything we did kind of, um, they duplicated that. And then I ran a lot of other divisions. Um, definitely was in the corporate world at that time. Um, and during that time had two children. So my kids um, are 16 months apart. So that was definitely a challenge. I was I was building, um, you know, the 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 uh, foundation for this this whole division from scratch and then traveling all over the country um and it was challenging my boss used to say what entourage do you have with you now because <laughs> uh, yeah it was totally true because um i could only bribe my parents so much to continue to watch the kids so i just would take them all with me yeah and so um yeah so it was kind of an interesting time and my ex-husband at the time um you know would sometimes meet us as well but you know I was like, I got to have them with me. And yeah. so I would say schools kind of cramped my style because by the time they... I was the same yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. we met each other actually at school with our kids. And I was the same way. I'm like, yeah. it, it school interfered. Yeah, I know. being able to take the kids. That's anyway, right. Because once they yeah. were five and they were in school, I was like, oh no. But they traveled all over the place. You know, I tell my kids, do you remember how many times you went to Disney World? Because I had an office in Orlando, <laughs> so I went there a lot. So anyway, but um, yeah, so I look back in those times and it was just crazy because, you know, you're trying to balance everything. And then um, when I was building SunTrust, I had an HR person that was helping me hire. We hired, oh my goodness, probably at the height, probably had four to 500 people working for me um, just in that division. And so she had gone over to another company and said, I need you to come over there and do exactly what you've done. And we're going to take this company public. And um, so I... You know, it's like, I don't even have a resume. I never had a resume, ironically. And so I'm like, I'm happy. And she's like, no, you really have to look at it. And so I'm like, okay, I'll take this plunge. And so I went over there. The company was Vantive. And we went public 18 months early wow. um, because it was so, so, we were so successful. I built everything from small business I, I had a part in. Um, and it was a great run. And then after that, um, I decided I really wanted to do something different and got into healthcare. And, you know, I always say my whole life we were in credit card processing and I was in money movement. And yes, that's important. But the healthcare piece, I think, was really um, what touched my heart because I could really see a difference and we could really see that we were helping and impacting people's lives. So that's kind of, uh, 
you know, a little bit of snippet from that. The kids now are, um, my son's birthday is today, actually. So he's 22, they're 22 and 23. And then we have two other sons with my husband um, that are uh, 26 and about to be, well, 29 and about to be 30. So between the two of us, we have four boys, all boys. All so, boys. All I have boys. three boys and a girl, and yeah. it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot, but yeah. I love having boys. I do too. Yeah, I do. I tell my husband though, if we ever get the the little girl grandchild, we're going to be just bankrupt. We'll be broke. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. I can see yeah. that because you can... know you can buy all the cute clothes and yeah. the the boys. You buy a dinosaur. Or they oh, get a yeah. truck on their shirt. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, you know. Yeah. So anyway, but that's kind of the. Um, you know, the fastest, I guess, part of the story. And again, throughout my career, I just had some really strong mentors. But, you know, there was definitely a lot of challenges throughout, you know, uh, throughout the whole thing. You were saying one of the things, um, some of the tough things and, yeah. and different things. So I think there's there's different things. I think from a personal perspective, um, you know, just balancing the personal aspect with the kids and, you know, and all of the... Uh, you know, all of the obligations you have with work and especially the travel. And the guilt. Um, That's exactly right. And the guilt. Yes, exactly. Um, From the business perspective, um, I was brought in a lot of times to change the morale, to try to help um, areas where, you know, people weren't clicking or whatever. And, you know, when you're doing that and when you're trying to move mountains, not everybody's always on board. And right. so you get a lot of roadblocks. And so you either decide that I'm just going to continue to plow through or you don't. Right. And a lot of people decide not to. Like yeah. throughout the, you know, I had some people that said, I can't do it. It's too much work. And then you had other people that, um, you know, said, all right, I'm on I'm on this train with yeah. you. We're in this boat together. Yeah. And let's, let's go and paddle as hard as we can. And so um, I always say, you know, um, the one thing that I know how to do is I know how to hire people. And I've just had just phenomenal people that have worked for me. And that, uh, That's funny. I work with a guy named Ted Baker. You yes. You met Ted. Yes. Uh, and that's what he says, and I see that in both of you, that you recognize talent. And I don't know how you, that's not my gift. <laughs> I, I, I recognize when I love someone's personality. Like I remember when I first met you, and you very strong personality, very happy, very positive, uh, but s- strong. Like I could feel your strength. And no, I, of I course, that. was, I, I, I get along very well with individuals like that. But as far as hiring, I think there's certain individuals that just notice talent and know how it can fit into a team. Yes. And you've shared that with me before, and Ted does too. And he's built successful companies as well. So that's interesting that you say that because I think one of the things that he's taught me, and you said this one time, I don't know, we were sitting down, we were eating. You said sometimes it's better people leave <laughs> if, yeah. if it's not the right environment for them. That's right? very true. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I always say, you know, it doesn't mean they're bad people, no. yeah. but this just wasn't a fit for them. Right. And, you know, I always look and say, you know, there's a lot of times where you're spending more time in an office with someone oh, than absolutely. you are with your family. So you better be happy at what you're doing. And if you're not, it's not a good fit. And even though you have a lot of challenges, at the end of the day, you know, you still know that you're all driving to the same goal and that you're all in there together. And um, and these are people that you're surrounded with that, you know, you feel comfortable and you know that everybody has your back. And that's that's what you want to have happen. Because when you're spending that many hours of a day with people um, and you're trying to accomplish some goals, you've got to make sure that it's a strong team and, you you know, it's people that you want to be there with you. Yeah, so. and I... I know recently, because um, I do want us to talk about some of the projects that we're working uh-huh. on together and what you're leading, because you do nonprofits, you're a mother, you're a wonderful wife, a wonderful friend, but you also do run companies and do, yes. do things. So uh-huh. you had asked me to come to Vegas on a healthcare project, mm-hmm. and uh, it's funny, so Clayton asked me, um, well, he said, you don't have time, and I said, yeah, but I get to hang out with Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I said, I, said, I think I'm going to. And then, and then the office said, you really don't have time. I said, yeah, I think I'm going to go. Because I was thinking this. And we, right. we postponed that. But I was thinking, well, I can at least like have fun. That's right. That's and right. work on something great. And That's that, right. that leads me to some things that we have worked a little bit on and we are working on. Yes. Um, you have become this presence, uh, not just in the United States, but internationally to attract companies to come here 
to open things here so that we can bring in outside technology, right, into yes. the United States. And one of those is something that has to do with purifying the air. Yes. There's a couple of companies. And during COVID and during viruses, and not just viruses, but we talked about this with the bacteria and the mm -hmm. fungus, it's really important to get all of these things out of the air because if they're in the air, we're all being approached by it. It's That's all, right. You know, it, it affects us. So sometimes people can even go into a hospital system or a hotel or into an environment and the air's not clean. That's right. They can get sick. So I do want you to talk a little bit about those projects and about how they help people and how we are integrating some of that into the United States. Great. So um, I have a few partners and uh, we started working on some things together and um, we started on this journey a year ago and it's called Eagle X Pro. And basically we have um, air systems that um, clean the air, not just in the air, but also on surfaces. Um, you know, the interesting thing is overseas seems to have been a little bit more progressive as far as air quality and more concerned about it yeah. than we here in the U.S. in particular. Um, and not all countries, but certain people were definitely much more um, driven to air quality than we were. And so huge opportunity here in the United States. And then when you start really looking at it, um, it's not just about COVID. It's about air quality overall. So it's pollen, it's odors, it's dander, it's funguses, you know, it's these super bugs that are happening. And so, um, you know, you don't realize that the area that you're coming into, is this a safe environment? Yeah. And now people are really thinking about that. And as companies are starting to open, whether it's here in the U.S. or it's overseas, employees are saying, I want to know what you're doing to keep me safe. Right. And so, um, you know, we're very fortunate in that our products have been proven and tested. Um, we continually to do tested on testing on them. And we've got a new partner that we're working with as well um, that's in the same type of arena. And basically the positioning is different depending on the needs of the customer. But at, ultimately, it's the same goal is to make people be able to come into an environment, whether you're in your home or you're at work or you're in your car, or you're in an arena or you're watching a concert and you know that you're in a safe environment with your when you're indoors right and which is really important i think you've traveled quite a bit yes. i've traveled quite a bit um and with all the stuff going on mm -hmm. you know one of the big issues is the air so you can just walk out and get into a crowd of people you have no idea that's right what you're being exposed to so like yeah. you said i know your husband is a famous musician yes i'm with a steve miller <laughs> band and he does a lot of different Witten brothers does yes. different things and so that's a, 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 an environment that definitely needs yes. clean air. But I think, you know, for me, working on so many hospital projects and working with India and Cyprus and, and actually about 22 countries, mm -hmm. we're hoping to bring this into the environments because in these hospital systems, hotels, you know, another hot that's right. hotbed, um, and all of the different environmental things that have to do with universities and classrooms, we really need this because That's the right. number of cases are going up still when it comes to mm -hmm. virus, the current virus, as well as additional things that are happening. Yes. And you and I discussed that this air purifier, which will actually rip things apart, attract the things that need they need to get rid of and rip it apart and get rid of it. Right. Um, I, you know, scientifically, it definitely works. I understand the science. Mm -hmm. I understand the ion exchange and how it rips it apart. My background with detoxification yes. and eradication, I think this is amazing and I think it's needed. And I think until you have things like this that are able to do it, we're going to have continued problems. That's right. But this device also will help with fungus and bacteria and not just viruses, correct? That's, that's exactly right. And um, a few years ago, my father passed away from... Um, a virus, basically, um, one of the superbugs called C. diff. Yeah. And so, you know, when I got into this project, you know, I really wasn't thinking um, that this would be something that could help with that. And then we realized that it actually can. And, you know, I say, if I can save one person from, um, from not having to go what we had to go through with my dad, 
that's a tremendous win. And then when you start to really look at it, it's not just about that. There's so many other things. This isn't going to be our last rodeo. You know, every time you turn around, there's something new and, you know, you're hearing um, overseas where different things have gone from animal to now animal to human and those kind of things. And so it's just going to continue to be a way of life, but it's a way of life where we can actually have it and be safe a way of life where we can actually be safe. And a lot of people don't realize that. And I think that's what is so important. No, I agree because I think we're living in a world that everyone is scared. And yes. so for me, I always say, yes. I understand the issue. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. You know, we have that's Cure the right. Causes um, route. We have the International Science Nutrition Society, which I definitely yes. want to have this project involved with as well. Um, but with all of that, if we have all these issues, we have to find solutions. That's exactly right. And that's what I, I love. First of all, your personality is one. I feel like mine is too. Oh, I want to find solutions, right? We've that's got kids, right. Yes. We've got, we're going to have grandkids. We want to be here. We want to help. Yeah. And so we've got to be strong. So hiding and not addressing issues or, you know, whether you're for vaccines or against vaccines, the virus is still growing, right? That's and it's exactly not just the right. virus. Like I said, it's everything around that's it. That's right. So you got to stand up, in, in my opinion, as a scientist uh, and a researcher, you stand up and you provide solutions for people. We can't make everyone accept the solutions, That's right? right. That's right. <laughs> but one of the reasons I really um, believe we will be on this journey together and continue to be on this journey is because this is one of the solutions. It's one of the blockades that you need. I shared this with you. I worked with HIV. I worked with Hep C. I mm-hmm. worked for Bristol Myers Squibb. You have to have these blockades to That's get rid right. of all these things. And this is one that I think is very important. And I'm, I'm very thankful that you brought this to me because of the projects that are getting ready to start at the end of this year. It's one of the things that I've put into the different plans that they really need. Yep. Because, I mean, and, and i got to tell you, like when my kids go to school, like here's my question, you go to the university, you go to high school, what are, what are they doing? Because they're being exposed to That's right. all the different variants. Mm-hmm. And as these variants are growing, the fungus is growing everywhere. We know there's three new strains. We know that the, the current fungus that was there before the new strains is stronger. And so I, I think to be able to have this is, is very, very important. Yeah, and we, and we agree as well. And I think, um, you know, just at a high level, um, exactly what you're saying is no matter whether you're indoors in your car or your child or your parent or in a nursing home or a hospital you want air quality to be safe and you want to know that you know they're walking into a safe environment and basically we're bringing the outside air Mm -hmm. the forest air the fresh air inside right and that's what we're doing and i actually don't know what's more important than air <laughs> like you have to have it to that's work. right i know right? you have to have it again to nobody really cared about it here in the u.s as much right you didn't think too much about it until really covid has really opened up so many people's eyes and it's kind of sad that it took that extreme to happen because this has been something that's been an issue for quite some time absolutely and i know when i work in a clean room like in your manufacturing mm-hmm. your clean rooms mm-hmm. your the air is one of the top things they're concerned about. That's exactly right. In fact, when we were talking about um, there's a pharmaceutical, actually multiple pharmaceutical companies involved in clean rooms and nutraceuticals in one of the projects that we're working on. And one of their questions actually before I brought this up was what kind of air purifier do you want in the clean rooms Mm -hmm. in the hospital setting? So so we know this is important. It's just that in the United States and in some other countries, People haven't been educated on this, and that's one of the reasons I really, besides the fact that you're an amazing person and nah, that you, you, you do so many great things, I, I wanted to bring this to people's attention so they can reach out to you all. They can reach out to me. We can mm-hmm. get people involved and make sure that we have clean air. That's exactly and right. It's not going to happen over overnight. You know, the World Health Organization, the UN, all of these organizations have talked about the fact that COPD, respiratory infections, are growing 70% of those occur because of inside air, not outside air, and people don't realize that. Mm-hmm. So it's actually the inside air that's stagnant, and I say this all the time, people think that it's in the air so it goes away, it dissipates, right? That mm-hmm. is not correct. <laughs> that that's is not accurate. Uh, it's kind of like heavy metals. You know, that's one of yeah. my things. They don't just go away. They're in the air, and they actually go all the way up to the stratosphere. So if you're inside, 
and you're doing things and you're in an environment, we've got to do a better job as governments, as societies, as companies, as having better inside air. I totally agree. So. I totally agree. So before um, we get off of this call, I do want to um, ask you to give me three things, three, three bits of advice that you can share with our listeners that are on this journey with us mm -hmm. that care about health care, that care about science, three things that you think they need to do to have better health and to have better wellness. Well, I think there's a, there's a couple things. And just so if I start back from a personal perspective, is that you need to be your own advocate. And I think people don't realize that. And really, you know, don't just take things at face value. You know, if somebody says, oh, our air is clean or what have you, you know, peel back the onion, ask those questions, really understand what's occurring. There's so many things that are out there that are just throwing things at the wall, but truly, in, in essence, are sometimes making it worse. Yeah. So no matter what you're doing is be your own advocate and, um, and don't be afraid to um, ask questions, um, whether it's, you know, your kid going to school or your, your child or your, your mother in a nursing home or your family in assisted living or in a hospital or what have you, you know, make sure that you're doing that. And I think that's number one. Um, so that's what I kind of think from a personal perspective. Um, if you're taking it more from a business perspective, um, I think advice is that if you're, you know, looking to grow and and um, and you're wanting to progress um, in a professional manner, um, really from a, I, I always say grab a mentor. Um, I had a friend of mine whose daughter is working for a company. I said, go and find out who the executives are and tell them you want them to mentor you. You, you know, at the end of the day, don't ever stop learning. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I'm just always amazed about you. I mean, every time I turn around, you're getting another degree. I mean, you're just amazing. And it's because at, at all of the accolades and everything that you've obtained, you always continue to figure out how you better yourself. And I think that's so important. And, and that's important from a personal perspective, but also in business. And people forget that. Yeah. And so I think that's also the other one. And then, you know what? Try to find that balance because at the end of the day, you've got to be happy you in what you're doing. And, and yeah. you know, um, if something's not working, find a way to fix it. And that's, that's what I think what a lot of people don't realize is that whether it's in business or whether it's personally, you know, you don't know how long we're going to be here. We just lost a very close friend of ours just unexpectedly. He was on the golf course. So and um, you just don't know. And my point is, is life is precious yeah. and cherish the time you have. Um, don't stop learning. Become your advocate and ensure that, um, you know, at the end of the day, you realize it's just a special thing to really to be able to do what we're doing and uh, and stay happy and be so. thankful. Like I sometimes think I need to not be angry because I didn't get something done or, yes. or frustrated because yes. I feel like every day there's so much to do. I have to remember I need to be happy. That's and exactly right and enjoy it. And and I love those things are definitely things I would put top of my list mm -hmm. and also creating the right people. In the circle to be around. Absolutely. The older I am, I'm, I'm like, I don't want to go there because I'm not sure I want to be in that environment. <laughs> I know. know. So, so yeah. now I think that's amazing. Yeah. And you do have a nonprofit. We do. We're very proud of that. It's called um, I Matter, You Matter. That's my bracelet and my necklace. Oh, I love those. And, I need uh, those. Yes. <laughs> and so we're we're very excited about it. Um, my husband is a musician. And when he was on tour, he would go and speak at schools all, all across the country. And you know, he's had days named after him. I mean, just all of this great work that he's done. And we decided, gosh, how can, what are other ways that we can give back? So we decided to start the nonprofit to start a scholarship fund for a lot of these kids that we work with. And then also, um, my husband does a lot of work with the veterans. And one of the things that should never, ever be in the same sentence is the homeless, homeless and the word veteran. We should never have homeless veterans. So we do a lot of work with veterans. Um, and so those are our two really main causes. Um, and he does a lot of work. He does concerts and things like that for them as well. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's just we're just trying to make it a little better. You know, yeah. it's not a huge charity, but we're trying to build it. And uh, we started it not long ago. 
And so um, we're very excited about it. And, you know, I tell him all the day, all the time, you know, through music, you can build a platform that can really change lives. And so yeah. we're hoping through our nonprofit, we can do that as well. That is wonderful. We are going to put information on you and your companies Perfect. as well as the nonprofit. Um, so you will hopefully get a lot of people that will ask questions because the things you're doing are very needed. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for thank your time. You. You're thank awesome. You. I had fun. So, and this yes. is great that you're on this journey with our listeners. I want to do this again. I don't I know if they'll keep that. wanting us back, but we'll try to get, we'll try <laughs> to get on. It. So love it. thank you guys so much for being on this journey and episode of Scientifically Beautiful. Please stay tuned next time. We have another exciting guest. And so we will be doing that very soon. Talk to you guys soon. See you later. Thank you.